Hello, students. So I sure wish that we were meeting in our physical classroom, but here we are returning from our spring break with some more distance learning, and we're going to make the best of the hand that we've been dealt and just move onward and upward. So this first video is the first video of Unit 5. So this is our second to last unit. We're getting there. We're getting closer. We can smell summer coming sooner than you'd know. So this is going to be talking about the push and pull factors of migration. Let's skip to those slides because the other slides are activities that we're going to be doing at the beginning of our Tuesday and Wednesday block period. So these are pretty self-explanatory terms, and I don't want to be too elementary about this, nor do I want to waste your time. So just to be very brief, let's use those self-explanatory definitions so a push factor with regard to migration would be something that is typically negative that is pushing someone out of their current living situation. It could be something like war or climate change, for example. And then a push, a pull factor rather, is something that would be drawing someone to a new location. So potentially an economic opportunity, a new job, a country that is much more politically stable, etc. Uh, it's important for us to realize that these are complementary forces, even though they are often opposite. And what I mean by that is that a push factor could certainly cause someone to want to leave their home, but they may not want to make the risk unless there's a pull factor that is worth it. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so let's just clarify a little bit more and then we'll move on to some examples from history. So another analogy I want to give you is a coin flip. So consider that all these categories here, in addition to other categories from our G-Spice understandings, picture them as coins, as quarters. And you would have a quarter for every category in G-Spice, G-S-P-I-C-E. Hopefully you get the idea. If you were to flip that coin, on one side would be a push factor, on the other side would be a pull factor. So for the P in G-Spice, political, you could say that a war-torn nation, that's a pull factor, push factor, and then a pull factor would be a country that is experiencing a time of peace. Make sense? I think it does, but let me know if you have any questions about that uh, and to clarify. So let's move on to some examples from history. A lot of them are on the slide, which are awesome. Maybe I'll add a couple more here. Um, like I said, this is not an exhaustive list, and what that means is that there are certainly many other examples that we could use from history. And we are also just talking about migration from Mexico, and then some general migration patterns from Central and South America as well. So in any event, it's we're going to talk a lot more about some of these policies and some of these terms. And so if you've never heard of something like NAFTA, for example, don't get too anxious. We're going to cover that. It's just not going to be right away when we introduce the unit. So in general, a lack of economic opportunity is a push factor. If you don't get paid very well and you need to provide for your family, um, you may not have the same sort of labor rights as there might be in a country that you want to move to. So for example, there may not be a limit to how many hours you can work in a given day. That could be seen as a very, very significant push factor because one, of course, wants a better quality of life and a job that pays them fairly. Um, so, of course, another thing, uh, this is all, all about the economy, not just one's personal economic opportunity, but if a country is experiencing a major economic crisis, that's going to be an economic push factor. And let's just leave the discussion of NAFTA for a little later in the unit because I don't want to jump down that rabbit hole in this video and make it too long. Um, so some political push factors. We're going to talk about the Mexican Revolution very shortly. Um, so it's important for us to realize that Mexico does have a storied and complex political history. A lot of its political history is actually connected to the history of the United States, which is really interesting. And so we'll talk quite a bit about that as well. But eventually Mexico turns into a single party state. And so someone who might oppose that leading party might consider the one-party state to also be a push factor out of Mexico. Um, Mexico does face some climate problems. Of course, other countries, especially the main destination of Mexican immigrants, the United States, also, of course, faces these problems. Uh, but this could also be a push factor uh, as well. Environmental push factors are common globally, um, which is helpful to think about because our final unit of this year will be global climate change, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
Okay, so pull factors. Uh, the U.S. economy developed rapidly after World War II, and that uh, was at the same time as the Mexican Revolution. So you can see, again, how these are complementary push-pull factors. Uh, political and economic instability in Mexico and political and economic stability in the United States. Uh, the economy was, of course, booming alongside of the political stability that the end of World War I brought. Uh, and so, of course, there were more jobs along with that. Uh, as the number of people immigrating from Mexico increased over time, it was more common for a family living in Mexico or elsewhere in Central America to, to already have family members who had immigrated to the United States and had settled. And so to already have a network of friends and family in another country could be a huge pull factor. Um, and of course, they share a border. They share an incredibly long border, Mexico and the United States, that is. Uh, so this is, you know, there's a geographic pull factor, geographic proximity. It's much harder to, let's say, move to a different continent. Um, and then uh, additionally, we're going to see that uh, there are some periods in U.S. and Mexican, Mexican history where the U.S. actually was more flexible with its immigration policies. And then there are other periods in history, including the present day, where the United States is more restrictive in terms of the number of immigrants that will let into the country. And that, of course, makes the pull factors actually vary. Um, and actually, let's talk more about globalization at a later time. Again, that's a little bit of a rabbit hole that I don't want us to get into just yet. And I do have other examples of push pull factors that we could certainly talk about in class. But again, I think brevity is key for these videos. Let's keep them short. And so I was saying at the very beginning of this, at least I hope I remembered to say this, that you should measure push-pull factors qualitatively and quantitatively. So here's a chart that we can potentially analyze in class. I don't want to go on about it in this video because the idea is for you to be able to interpret data by yourselves. Um, but it's important for us to consider the trends over time with unauthorized and, uh, and legal migrants. Um, also, this says migrants. We should be talking specifically about uh, immigrants because that's actually what this chart is about. Um, and so that's a really important factor to consider when you're thinking about, let's say, the United States immigration policy and how that has evolved over time. So let's start to sum up here and, uh, and finish. So again, push and pull factors, they are going to be very important terms for us to consider throughout the entire unit. So by all means, do not just forget them halfway through the unit if we have a quiz. Um, we should be able to analyze them. We should be able to come up with constant examples throughout history. Throughout this entire unit, we're going to be focusing mostly on Mexican history, but you know me, I also have taught U.S. history. So at least in my sections, a and F periods, we're going to definitely be drawing a lot of parallels to the U.S. history narrative. And it's also, I think, going to help you look forward to some of the topics you're going to learn in U.S. history. So I think that's it for now. Let me know if you have any questions either in the comments or if you're one of my students, feel free to send me a question directly. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon.